Welcome to another video from McFatter Tech Musser. If you like these videos, please click subscribe. Okay, in this video we're going to discuss routing using RIP version 2 in our Windows Server environment. Yeah, I know most of your routers are hardware routers, but maybe in your virtual environment you've got some Windows servers configured with routing and remote access services. It's an easy way to set it up virtually. But what about getting out that default route? We could create static routes and as you can see on the screen I've got my routes defined here for router 1, router 2, router 3, router 4 and I could create a default route on each one of the routers and I could say, hey, if you want to use a, uh, if you need the default route, you need to, you know, because router 1, it knows about the internet. It's connected to the external. Router 2, all it knows about is its JSON routers. It doesn't know about a default route. You have to give it one, right? So I could define a default route, but it's going to be assigned to one adapter might not be a good scenario you know if we're trying to simulate real world what if an interface goes down what if a network connection goes down rip version 2 allows us to be self-healing dynamic route assignment right if we're doing this say with Cisco routers or other hardware routers where we're working with command line we can say broad you know advertise the default route and listen for this default route and update itself. Well, Windows routing doesn't use command line. So we're not going to use default route. So let's get rid of this, this uh, document here I've got on the screen. You can see how my routing is, is uh, configured. I've got router 1, router 2, router 3, router 4. We've got inter interlinking links we've got a mesh network created right so let's take a look so over here on router one I've got a number of interfaces I've got my WAN links that are defined I've also got a link to the internet if I if we look over here in general we can see those interfaces right over here router two router three router four and we can see I've got some subnets here so right now, now you can see I was doing some testing here. Right now I know the gateway that my router one uses to get access to the internet is is 10.185.192.1. Right? So I can ping that. That's no problem. If I take a look at static routes and show my IP routing table, look, there's no default 0000, 000 route my system doesn't know how to get to the internet all it knows about is the adjacent networks if I try to ping something say like a backbone router on the internet uh, like 4.2.2.2 nothing doesn't work here we go so if you go into your WAN links that are you've that you've defined in RIP so for example WAN 1.2 and I come over here and I say I want to include default routes in sent announcements. I click OK and I'm going to do the same thing for the other ones. That's under advanced when you double click on that, that RIP properties right there. Now I'm going to come back over to my router 4. Let's take a look under static routes. Nothing there yet, right? It's not instantaneous, right? Well, there's something missing here. I need to be able to tell these WAN links to process the announcements. So let's go in here. Advanced. Process default routes and received announcements. See that right there? In fact, what I'm also going to do is I'm also going to tell it to include default routes and send announcements. That way, if an interface goes down, not only will I understand the default, what the default route is that's being broadcast, but I'll broadcast out and say, hey, here's an, an alternative. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to double click the next one. Advanced. I'm going to select 
both process default routes in received announcement and include default route in sent announcements. Right here, advanced. Okay, okay. If I look at my routing table, look, now my default route shows up. And its preferred method is direct, right? Right, right from router 4 to router 1. Well, let's do the same thing on router 3. Advanced. Process include. Process include. You gotta do this to each one of your links. That, that makes the, the mesh self -heal healing. Go to number 2. Click OK, Advanced, Process, Include, OK. So if I look over here, I'm on Router 2 now, there's my default route, directly from 2 to 1. OK. Now, what happens if an interface goes down? I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to drop that link between 1 and 2. I'm going to disable it, and I'm going to come back over to Router 2. If I refresh, it still thinks that link's there, right? If I look at my routing table, it still thinks it's there. It still thinks it should work, right? Is it going to work? Well, if I bring up a command prompt, and I try to ping that same 4.2.2.2, which should work, right? Timed out. It's trying to go out that interface. It's not working. If I come over here to my router 4, it's working just fine here, right? You know, if we look at that routing table right there, using one 4 to 1, 1 to 4, let's come back over to router 2. Let's take a look at the static routes. Still thinks it should use, right? Okay going to come back over here. Uh, what I want to do is I'm going to go into my router 1 RIP properties. I'm going to say def process default routes and received announcements as well. So we'll start off with router 1. Okay, everything's straightforward here, right? This is, it's got NAT, it does LAN routing, all the same, all the basic basic things. If I come back over here to router two, still thinks it's supposed to use one. What's going on, huh? If I come over here to router three, take a look. It's using one to three. That's fine. That's work. That that works right. Over here in router four. Everything should be working fine, just, just, you know, cruising along. Let's come back over here. I'm going to re-enable, and I'm going to disable 1 to 3. If I come back to 2, that should be working again. Yeah, yeah it's there, right? But 3 is going to be down, right? It's timing out. Let's take a look at our static routes. See, it still thinks it should use 1 to 3. So we've tried a bunch of different things, right? We've made a bunch of different changes. Were the routes updating? No. Why? Because we changed our configuration, but we didn't restart our router. So I'm going to start with router 1. I'm going to tell it to restart, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to pause the video while each one of these restarts. It takes a few moments. Uh, we don't need to sit here and watch it. I'm going to pause the video while I restart. I'm going to do one through four, and then I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back, and router four is just about ready to have the service restarted. It should be, yep, there we go. Okay, so now 
if we come back to router 1 we can see that the WAN 1 to 3 interface is still down here again let's jump over there's here's router 2 here's router 3 I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna show a routing IP table look if I want to get to my default route use 2 3 because 1 3 is down right if I ping 4.2.2.2 I should yep there we go if I bring up that one three one three interface the network connection was repaired right come back over here close my routing table I'll just refresh my view go back to the routing table it still says but look see it's updating it, it it's seeing changes if I okay I can ping right let's take another look let's see that st those static routes and now it's back to 1.3 well you know what maybe we're having massive problems not only did 1.3 go down but also 1.2 let's jump over to router 2 because it thinks 1.3 right 1.2 right there. look look 1.2 let's try doing that ping yeah, not gonna work, huh? Timed out. Let's see if it's updated. Hasn't updated yet. Still trying to use that one two. I mean one four. This is this is up the whole time, right? Let's look over on three. Because three is down again, right? Show IP routing table. Got some issues. It's not instantaneous. Still wants to use one three, right? Okay, and let's take a look again. We gave it a little bit of a little bit of time. Yes, it's updated. Remember, not only is one two down, but one three is down. Let's see if we got back. Yep, we're back. It understood that it couldn't go straight to it. It couldn't go to two. It had to go to four over here on two if you look yep it's going to four as well it works it's not instantaneous it's quick it does self heal but remember you don't want it to be immediate because what if it's just a, a momentary interruption you don't necessarily want your routes bouncing all over the place I hope you found this interesting it's another way that we can use routing in Windows Server and be able to create our self-healing networks. Remember, that's what we do in networking, provide availability. Thank you for watching. If you like these, please click subscribe. And as I always say, I'll see you in the next lesson or lab. Take care, everybody. Have a great one.